you have to make sure that you know what's going on around you at all times. A lot of car drivers, and it's crazy how much you pick up on this once you start riding, in my opinion, uh, a lot of drivers know what's going on directly in front of them, that's it. They don't know what's going on over here, over here, behind them, nothing like that. And we can't do that. We have to know what's behind us. Like I, I now see a black car coming up behind me. It looks black anyway. It's dark, but he's still a fair distance away. But when these guys start to get a little bit too close to me or, you know, I see that they're going to pass me or anything like that, I need to be prepared for that. Um, every Any time I start to decelerate, I know that I need to make sure that I find a way to turn on my, my brake light so that these cars will slow down and they won't come hit me. <laughs> You know, so anytime I brake, whether it be in the car or on the bike, I don't touch the brakes without looking in my mirrors first to make sure that someone's not going to ram into the ass end of me. On bikes, we actually have an advantage over cars uh, to that element because we could fit in tight places. So if we're in, you know, if we're going on the highway and there's a sudden stop and the car behind me isn't looking like he's going to stop, we can easily go beside the car in front of us and let the other guy get hit. It's a doggy dog world, isn't it? But know what's going on around you. Anytime you, you drive by a parking lot, you should quickly scan it to make sure nobody's coming out. You know, always look underneath these other vehicles to make sure you don't see a bunch of little feet running or a bunch of kids who are going to run in front of you. Well, you always have to stay engaged while you're riding. You can't zone out and, you know, start to stress over finances or whatever the case may be when you're riding you're riding and that's it that's all you're doing that's all you can do because you or you're vlogging in this case <laughs> um, that's all you really can do because there's so much going on around us that we can perceive as risks if we'd like and and we should any one of these cars can have a muscle twitch and come into my lane you never know on the topic of staying engaged all the time while riding, uh, a few times I put in some headphones as I was riding and listened to some music, you know, nothing like hearing Eminem as I ride down the highway and uh, was it enjoyable? Absolutely, but I stopped doing that. I, I did it I think twice, maybe three times, uh, but I decided against it uh, just because there's so much that I'm missing out, like I'm basically eliminating one of my senses. Uh, uh, the sense of hearing, you guessed it, uh, but I'm eliminating one of my senses there um, and preventing myself from basically being able to know what's going on around me. I won't be able to hear the sirens, I won't be able to hear people's horns or engines coming up behind me or, you know, trucks uh, doing engine braking, which means I should probably get the hell out of the way or whatever the case may be. So, um, again, it's about staying engaged all the time and minimizing the distractions obviously um, you know we know cars have their distractions with their cell phones and all that eating while driving and whatever we can't really do that <laughs> uh, but music is, is one of the big ones that uh, I opt away from riding in the rain is another uh, another one um, poses a lot of risks obviously with the slippery surface, the limited visibility and whatnot. But again, you know that it's going to be slippery. When you walk out and the roads are wet, well, I should probably take it easy on my way home tonight. I probably shouldn't race anybody. I should probably stay off these lines. Like these lines, all the, all the painted lines and everything on the road get very slippery when, uh, when they're wet. The manhole covers, they get slippery. Uh, water tends to pool up. Uh, along the curb here and you don't want a hydroplane on a bike because that's no fun either uh, So you want to stay away from the edges the center right in the center of the road uh, The water from the rain will reactivate all the oils and and grease that other cars let down and that gets slippery So you want to stay away from the center so the safest place to be is in the tire tracks of other cars Again, that's on you. You know, you know the roads are wet. You can't not know it so do your due diligence and ride accordingly. It's kind of like driving a car in a snowstorm or on ice. You know, you're so cautious all that you gotta be. And it's the same thing when you're riding in the rain. It's not, is it a hazard? Sure, but it doesn't have to be as big of a hazard as people think it is. At the end of the day, 
I'm the one who's choosing to be on this motorcycle. I'm ex the one choosing to be more exposed. This is something I enjoy doing very much. Passionate about it, all that shit. We know this. What I'm more passionate about and what I enjoy doing even more is living and going home to my son at night. There, there's got to be some sort of accountability on you to not be an asshole as well. It's one thing to call them out for the things that other drivers do, but what are you doing? Uh, the other day I was uh, in my car driving home with my wife and my, my son in the back seat. Uh, we were on the Highway 417 in Ottawa and um, I, I knew there were bikes coming behind me because I could hear them uh, and I could hear their inline fours just screaming I'm like oh wow like I knew before I've been seeing them these guys must be going quick I, I quickly glance up in my mirror and I see must I think, I think it was four bikes uh, a fair distance away uh, at that point they were on the left hand side of me I was in the middle lane they were on the left hand side of me I glance back down at the road just to make sure that I'm not going crazy and going to hit somebody. Look back up in my mirror to check the left side. They're not there anymore. And then I hear a screaming exhaust fly by me on the right side. I can't describe how quick these guys must have been going. And uh, for them to just switch sides like that without me being able to see it. And so quickly, where I literally took my eyes off the, like, off the mirror and then back up, they were gone. Uh, and I watched them in front of me weaving through traffic overtaking undertaking overtaking undertaking uh, and they were obviously racing there's actually a couple cars who were following following them doing the same thing <laughs> what do you expect if you're gonna ride like that what do you expect to happen like that's what I mean you gotta kind of you at that point you've lost the right to judge other drivers you can judge other drivers to be assholes if you're gonna ride like that because I can just imagine everybody Around me in those cars that they were weaving through including myself who is a motorcycle rider was thinking bunch of pricks like What gives them the right to put me and my my son in the back poor innocent little little boy? at risk because they want to have a rush I've been there. I've done you know some things that I shouldn't have done I even got a video up where I was riding like an idiot and I regret it I won't do it anymore but it again you have to kind of earn the right to criticize other people the sport bikes have such a terrible terrible name and perception from the public or uh, you know a lot of cruiser riders oh I don't like that crotch rocket shit it doesn't always have to be like that you know there's a lot of people who will get a super sport bike because that's the type of bike that they enjoy riding not because they want to be dickheads i'm a man i've got the testosterone thing going with me too and i get it i 100 percent get it when you have that power at your disposal a quick flick of the wrist it's it's an adrenaline rush that's you know that's in our blood it's in our nature but there's tracks for that like we've got the infrastructure around us to support that ability it's just there's a time and a place and you, you gotta kind of think of what you're doing and like if I if you do it on the open public streets who else are you putting at, at risk not only are you jeopardizing your life and playing Russian that with your life but you're doing it with other people around you and that's selfish there's a lot of motorcycle deaths that I'll hear about on the news or see and if I find out it's a sport bike I even judge them I I ride a damn motorcycle and I'm the one sitting here being like ah on a super swear what was the guy doing you know and it's not right for me to think that because I don't know I don't know what they were doing they, they, the police haven't released that or whatever the case may be but perceptions rule the world unfortunately I think when you're in the moment you know where you have an opportunity somebody wants to race you because even me on this I I get challenged to race daily on the highway off the highway at red lights civics everything and I mean the majority of them I know that I can crush the person and, and win and I won't lie there's uh, a sliver in me that wants to do it <laughs> you know being competitive whatever being human but I don't uh, and I think the the biggest thing that you got to kind of ask yourself is Will I enjoy this ride more if I'm going faster? Yeah, you probably will. It, again, it's an adrenaline rush. I get that. But will you enjoy it to the point where you're willing to make it your last ride?
you're really opening up that option, whether it's a last ride because you hurt yourself or kill yourself, or it's a last ride because you hurt somebody else and your insurance goes up to the point where you can't afford to ride anymore, or it's your last ride in the sense that this cruiser right here or that undercover cop right there, not undercover, sorry, unmarked, um, will we'll get you. You never know, right? And Don't even say it. Don't say, well, I would just outrun them. I'm on a super sport. Don't even. That's just dumb. I, I'm sorry. I, that's just silly. Has it been done before? Sure. I've seen those YouTube videos too. But I've also seen the transporter, I think it's called, uh, where he f kind of barrel rolls his car, which has a bomb on the bottom of it, and he knocks off the bomb using one of these here poles. There's a lot of far-fetched things that we see on TV that aren't exactly realistic and obviously running from the police in my opinion is one of them. Like these, this is what these people are trained to do day in and day out. You think you're the first person that ran from them? Don't, just don't, they're pulling you over for a reason. You know what I mean? Like accept some, some accountability and... Another important uh, thing to consider with regards to promoting your own safety is choosing the bike that's right for you. You know, and we can get into the topic of starter bikes and how you shouldn't get overzealous there and just being responsible with your choice, but also just picking a bike, bike that fits you, that you're comfortable with, that you feel like you're in control of. There's a lot of bikes that people have where they can't touch the ground, you know, whether, you know, dual sports or whatever, or if it's just somebody shorter, they can't flat foot on both sides, and uh, if that's your style of riding and, and you're comfortable doing that, then by all means, but make sure it's something that you're comfortable with so that you're not intimidated by the machine that you're on. So one of the worst things that can happen is uh, we're talking about being prepared and proactive for situations as they come. Well, you can only be so proactive when you're scared of the machine that you're on. You know, like you can only handle that situation so well. So make sure it's a bike that you're comfortable with. I, I know when on my shopping list for bikes, I'm, I'm looking for ABSs and non-negotiable. And no, despite what other people say, that doesn't mean that I'm a bad rider and that I don't know how to brake or use braking techniques. No, that's, that's not what it means at all, in my opinion. What it means to me is that I like having that tool at my disposal in case I need it, because it can save my damn life. And again, I, I choose life over riding. <laughs> it makes sense to me. And uh, I would rather spend the extra $500,000 to make sure that it is there. So if I ever do need it, and if, I, if my preparation fails me, then... I have one extra tool on my belt to keep me alive. I know there's probably a lot of things that I'm missing, uh, just because I'm just rambling off the top of my head. Um, you know, if you do have any major points that I did miss, feel free to let's discuss it in the comments below. Uh, I love when we can engage in some good conversation. A lot of times, I'll, I'll, I'll notice my viewers are having these discussions that I'm not even a part of but I'm reading all the all the comments that are involved and uh, I think it's great it's a great community so if I did miss some things and you can contribute here let's do it uh, again the whole the whole purpose of this video uh, is basically enabling us to minimize the risk of riding um, by being proactive as opposed to reactive is this dangerous yes it is so what are you gonna do about it Okay, so that's that's kind of where I'm at today. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate your continued support. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. Have a good one, guys, and keep on keeping on.